Who was the, the fucking guy, Professor Galloway? I, I forgot that he was on the show a few weeks ago on Drinking Bros. This fucking guy. Do we have volume on this? Okay. Yeah. P play, play, play this for the audience if you can. Maybe you're learning here. Maybe it's fun. Fine. Maybe it it's loud? a movement. But can be prepared to lose 80 to 90% of it. And if it's still worth it, then have at it. But the biggest loss of capital here will be the human capital of young men who are sitting and staring at their phone and watching the price of Bitcoin or the price of AMC. And ask yourself, would you be better off taking that one, two, or three hours a day and working out, trying to form relationships with mentors, with, with, with romantic relationships, with people at work, getting great at something so you can be the person on the other side of the trade. The greatest loss in, in capital here is, is from young men who are more prone to gambling addiction, who don't understand uh, the markets. I think we are setting ourselves up similar to how there's a ton of young women out there who became very depressed by sitting in their rooms looking at Instagram, self-cutting and self-harm skyrocket. I think you are going to see uh, uh, an explosion in young male depression and i think a lot of it is going to be reverse engineered to apps that convince you you're part of a movement or physically addict you to your phone ask yourself would your time staring at robin hood be be better spent somewhere else that is the real capital destruction that is taking place here yeah hey guys get out of your basement start working out stop staring at your phone stop investing your money and then maybe you can be on the other side of this trade one day because that's the, I mean, he basically just said, if you wanna be on the other side of this trade one day, you're gonna to have to be worth billions of dollars and have some investor at some hedge firm bail you the fuck out. That's exactly what he's saying here. The, the rest of it is, is all fucking ball wash and bullshit where, oh man, these, you got these people who are, most of them are, are addicted to gambling. Uh, they can't get girls. They should start working out, start forming relationships. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. That's what they did. You fuck, and then you change the fucking rules. Um, and here's the here's the beauty of this, right? Because I, it wasn't until you texted me that, that this was this was the same guy that was on our show, because the guy that was on our show a few weeks ago was was affable and you know laughing and all that shit. When he started losing money, he wasn't. Uh, and then he goes on air, well, you're gonna fucking lose this and lose this and blah 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 blah. No, the other key to this fucking guy in this bullshit speech yesterday. Guess who just signed a big fat fucking movie deal with Netflix to do the Reddit GameStop AMC movie for Netflix. That guy. That guy is the consulting producer for this movie. And there's only one way this movie can end for it to be a great movie is if everybody loses. The little guy loses. We were right. You were wrong. You were all so fucking dumb. Uh, that's the only way this can end. People jumping off of fucking buildings and killing themselves. That is the only ending that will be acceptable to this movie at fucking Netflix. That's it. Because otherwise, what if everybody would have won? Then, then what is that movie? What is that fucking movie on Netflix if everybody wins? What, a bunch of fucking 20-year-olds living in mansions, driving fucking Lambos? That's not the movie. Because then it would have been reversed. All, you had all the, the hedge fund guys, these old fuckers who were losing money, jumping off roofs, killing themselves, while a bunch of fucking young guys who were on Reddit all day, driving Lambos, living in mansions, that can't be the end of your movie, right? Nah, we can't put that out in Hollywood. That would be way too fucking convenient. Ask Bernie fucking Madoff how that worked out for the rest of those people he built out of billions of fucking dollars. Why can't that be the ending? The question is, can we change it? Yeah, it's not over. It's not over. Uh, the, if you look at the volume, the volume is still pretty fucking low. And the reason why the volume is low is because you can't buy the stocks right, on but any of these fucking sites. Nobody's really selling. Nobody's selling right now. Um, and Jack Dorsey, I don't know what the fuck this guy is doing. I, look, I hate Jack Dorsey. I've always hated Jack Dorsey. I hated him for the Trump bullshit. But him tweeting out diamond hands, which means telling everybody to hold their stocks, you know, an hour ago, it's crazy. You can't sell it on your, the, the app that you fucking own, but you're telling everybody to hold on to the stocks? Why? What if that goes bad? Is there anything you can do against Jack Dorsey? Again, I don't think Jack Dorsey really controls what's going on at Twitter right now. And also Cash App, they're going through a third-party broker. 
to kind of do all these deals. So tough shit. It'd be, it'd be like if I would have hired right, right. But if I hired they're... if I hired you guys and you guys fucking murdered somebody and they were like, "Well, I, didn't you know that they were murderers?" Yes. Like Giorgio, if Giorgio murders somebody, I had a strong hunch, dude, that he was going to murder one day. You know what I'm saying? I could see Cash App figuring it out and getting this done by tomorrow. Just having another Either broker. way, yeah. you lost an entire day of trading again. This started last Thursday. You're on Tuesday now. Four days for all these rich assholes to get out of these shorts and sell these fucking stocks so they can make their money back. Well, um, some of them are doubling down. They're shorting the shorts. Yes. They're, they keep shorting. They keep shorting. So it's like, dude, there is no reason for any of these apps to open up. But when they do, if you're able to, to, to hang in there, I'm hanging in there. I, I don't really give a shit. But also, it's the same way with gambling, man. The money we put in, we can afford to lose. So if, if I lose it, I lose it. Like, uh, but that's just being smart. Uh, and I don't need to tell you that. I'm not going to fucking lecture you like the, the rest of these assholes. Like, everybody knows what they're doing, right? It, it's not like you're living on a fucking prayer like John, John Bon Jovi out there, and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm going to get rich tomorrow. There's always a shot that the underdog is going to win or somebody else is going to win. It'd be the same way with, with Sunday's game. I've, I've had a really fucking hard time deciding who's going to win. We're doing that show, shit, uh, this afternoon, I think, um, for the Super Bowl special today. No one is picking the Buccaneers. Not one single fucking person I have talked to, not one athlete, nothing. We had Santonio Holmes on yesterday, one of my favorite players of all time. Uh, for Ohio State's ca caught the game-winning catch in the Super Bowl. He's picking the Chiefs. Everybody's all in on the Chiefs, right? Uh, but what happens if the Bucks win? People bet on the Bucks. Tom Brady wins again. Are they not going to pay you out for that? No, of course they are. They're going to fucking pay you out. Because fucking Vegas and gambling has more fucking heart than these goddamn stockbrokers out there. Yeah, but they also wildly underestimate how much Wall Street bets and kind of like people of like cut from our cloth like to lose like there's a thing called loss porn right obviously on wall street yeah, yeah, bets yeah, yeah, that people yeah, yeah. used to always post <laughs> and it's like uh, yeah no dude we've been here before yes like we're comfortable here we're Mo fine most of the people are so yeah i like dan said there's not a lot of volume not a lot of people are selling uh because they're holding on to there's not a lot of people that are buying because you can't some one, one of these days there's going to be a breaking point in this and i don't know which way it's going to go it, it could skyrocket to the fucking moon because you can't close these apps down forever. You can't hold these people off forever. And then what? What if the Redditors get together again and say, hey, guys, they open it all back up. Flood them at this exact moment. Set your watches. Let's all go in at fucking 930 a.m. opening bell and get this one stock. Once all this shit is open, you can't stop it again. I, I mean, I guess you could halt the markets again, but, uh, you know. It's uh, it's wild, but you guys were not wrong. Not, nobody was wrong in this. Um, this was the correct way to do it. This is how you were supposed to do it. Uh, was everybody getting together, believing in one company and buying it? Uh, you, you know, I, look, is GameStop worth the evaluation that it's at? N no, it's not. But it doesn't matter. You, what, anyone should be able to go in and buy and sell stocks and do whatever the fuck they want with this. Yeah, just talking to friends. That I have a, a buddy at Fidelity. He said there was 400,000 new accounts. Yeah. Over the last like few days or whatever. Yeah. So. So they're they're out there and they're waiting. Something is going to happen. I don't know what, but I'm not getting out of it now.